This is my new account, Kinda Slotty. I love filling in the collection log, but I want to take things one step further by limiting my access to it. In order to open up new content, I'm going to have to take advantage of the very few sections that I start with. But I have to be careful, because if I fill in a slot from a page I haven't unlocked yet, it's game over. So join me as I embark on a brand new, unique adventure. Unlocking RuneScape, one page at a time. Welcome to Log Locked. Hey. Starting this one off with a Dust Battle Staff drop, and uh, you guys are probably wondering why I'm here. I've been looking for some stuff to AFK after finishing up the last video. AFKing range at Dust Devils is really good. I've actually been here most of the day, and I'm getting over 130k XP an hour right now, and that's with taking like a one hour break to go cook some food. And I'm definitely profiting too, just by alking is making up for the cost of the prayer potions, the arrows, and the charges on the venator bow. So it's just profitable range training that's actually going at a pretty decent speed and i'm gonna want higher range in the future when i start taking on some bosses i just have to figure out a way to do this with magic too i was so afk i didn't even notice this one was coming up that is 90 magic to start this video off and uh, that's also 1750 total i did say i was looking for some stuff to afk and honestly magic has been really easy i have the second inventory plugin on so i can just leave my spell book open over here and then uh, i'm just afk casting plank make it's actually a pretty decent way to get magic xp i think i'm getting like 70 to 90k per hour depending on you know how afk i am it's a good like maybe two three minutes where i don't really have to pay attention to the screen at all and on top of that it's actually like break even or slight profit right now pretty worth doing definitely better than splashing so while all that training is still going to be going on in the background i still have a good handful of mahogany logs to make into planks and it's pretty afk so i'll probably continue doing it in the last episode we grinded out 85 slayer and with that we got a bunch of combat stats and just a bunch of other passive stuff and quests done as well and with that we also managed to complete 56 hard clue scrolls. Now, if I go to the collection log and look at the hard clue section, there are 134 potential items we can get from here. Clue scrolls are ridiculously important. You might notice that in my inventory, I have this master clue, and from these hard clues, we're probably going to get a few more masters as well. So what I plan on doing, and I know I said I'd do this last time, but I'm going to be attempting to do every master clue that I can get from these, even if they have some pretty crazy skill requirements. Now, I'm sure there's a couple of Sherlock steps and just quests that I really won't want to do, but things like Song of the Elves, Monkey Madness 2. I plan on doing any of that if it comes up, since all that stuff is going to be needed in the future anyway. Might as well just get it done now. And what a way to get started. Mix an anti-venom potion? Oh lord, what level is anti-venom potion? Oh, that's high. That is 87. Oof. How much is that going to cost? I actually need level 70 to do Song of the Elves anyway, so at some point I was going to have to train this. And I mean, you know, what's 13 more levels after that? Some of these potions aren't as expensive GP per XP as I remember them being so i'm hoping this will cost me like less than 10 to 15 mil it's gonna take a while though so uh i didn't say i'd do stuff i meant my word let's go get it done There's a uh, level 65. Right side is, at least the skill is fast. I mean, I'm getting 200k XP an hour just making uh, super attack potions. Which means that if I make super attack potions all the way up to 83, this will only take uh, <clears throat> 12 hours. I don't want to talk about it. I've been brain offing so hard doing this that I just blew right past 70, but that was the original level I planned on stopping at for Song of the Elves. But hey, 13 more levels to go. I'm making super defense potions now, which are 50% more XP than super attacks. It's about the same GP per XP loss, so. Well, hey, 75 herblore, just a few levels to go. Just everything I did, I have to do it again. Hey, 77, that means I can make staminas now. Uh, should be a bit more AFK than what I'm doing, and apparently, it's cheaper. Okay, I lied. I guess I won't be doing that because apparently the buy limits on these items are like pretty low. Big level 80 coming in. I, I just bought some more of the stamina stuff overnight because this is just, it's just so much more relaxing and it's so much cheaper technically. At least at the time of me recording this, it was cheaper. <laughs> So I accidentally drank one dose of uh, super energy while I was doing this grind. And uh, because of that, I have one amylase crystal and also literally one XP until level 83. Bam, 
there is 83 herb lore done. Now, the reason I stopped at 83 is because I can pretty easily just buy a, I think it's a botanical pie for a plus four boost to make an anti-venom and then just continue on with this clue scroll. Well, this dumb idiot fallow made me buy a freaking arm a helmet for this clue, but we managed to get this master done. I'm actually just going to open these as I get them instead of, you know, stacking them all up for the end. I don't know. I just feel like it's more interesting this way. And uh, wow, that is terrible. I'm pretty sure we're actually going to lose money on this master, not just because of the herb lore, because the amount of money I'm going to lose selling this arm a helm back. That's like one of the worst master clues I've ever seen, but at least we got it done. Now let's open the hard clues. All right, actually, I have these other clues to open before I open up the hard clues. So let's crack these open first. We're missing a ton of items in all of these logs. Beginners, I expect to get nothing. Mediums, I also kind of expect to get nothing. Hards, we'll get a lot of slots though, but let's go ahead and just open these up real quick. See if we can maybe snag a quick beginner unique. No. All right. I'm not surprised and I'm actually not even upset about that considering how lucky we've been on those up until this point. The easy clue, also nothing. All right, now the mediums. Maybe a cheeky pair of rangers in there. Maybe a cheeky pair, ah, duplicate elegant. Maybe cheeky pair anything in there. Hey, there's a slot. Adamant plate body H2, very nice. I don't know what's in there. This Guthix page, no one cares about that. And a boater. All right, so one. We got one new item there and also one medium clue off of 400. I do have one in the bank. So cool. I'll probably do that at some point in between all these other ones. Now it's time for the hard clues. There are so many log slots that we can get out of these. I am actually just excited to start opening them. So let's start opening these. Wow, I'm actually kind of disappointed that the first hard clue I opened was no collection log slots, but 50k is not terrible. 350k is much better, though that's primarily because of these Narda teleports being worth like 5 billion gold. I don't know why it's not showing up in the chat when I examine it. There we go, yeah. 31k each? That's fucking insane. Okay, hello, hard clues. You're supposed to give me collection log slots. Thank you. That's a good one, too. Sardomen Dehyde Boots. That's a 700k clue right there. Very nice. Actually, have a pair of those in the bank already. All right, now, now, now start, you know, start throwing the rewards in. Come on. What is that? Three different god pages? That's crazy. I'm, I'm not even mad at this one. It's 400k. I mean, nearly, nearly half a million gold, but, uh, how, how have we done nine hard clues and literally had one clue unique? What the heck? It's actually crazy. Well, regardless, let's see anything crazy on this master to start off. Nope. All right. Hopefully we can do it. All right. I got a weird one. So this master clue requires me to kill a fire shade, which is fine. I need a gold or silver shade key. In order to get that, I actually have to be able to burn you pyre logs. So hilariously enough, I actually have to train my fire making for this step. I was planning on doing this eventually, and I actually kind of wanted to do some of the skilling mini games in this episode though. All right. So we're going to open up Winter Todd. I, I know it's not the most exciting content in the world, I'm just going to stay there until 75 for now. I only need 65, but I'm just going to stay until 75 for now. Then we'll come back later and finish it up. And I actually just realized, I think by opening Winter Todd, I actually have to open up the Dagonoth Kings, which is a weird one. But because Winter Todd actually does have a, it's ridiculously low, but it does actually have a chance of giving you a Dragon Axe, which is only otherwise available at the Dagonoth Kings. I think I actually have to open these up too. I was kind of putting off doing this, I think, even in just the last video, but I guess when we do Slayer in the future, even if I don't have the Elite Relica Diaries or from Nick Diaries done, I might just go here to knock these log slots out. Kind of an unfortunate double unlock there, but hopefully the clues will give us some, some stuff back. And Winter Todd also has 10 slots available, so I should be able to get at least, you know, the full Pyromancer by the time I'm 99 or so. You know what, honestly, since Winter Todd was kind of part of the plan for this episode anyway, I think I'm just gonna stay here until 90 because that is actually another master clue step. You need to be able to burn a redwood log. I'll see you guys in, uh, I actually don't know how long this takes these days, but I'll open up some crates periodically, I guess. Hey, and with that we get that's a hard combat task really okay cool i did not expect it to be a hard combat task why fletch three points that should be all of the combat tasks for winter todd i believe let me take a look here yep so we're at a for winter todd i just figured i might as well do it that's actually really the only one i had to actively go for all the other ones even the keep all the mages alive just was passive so a bunch of free combat achievement points see you guys when i get to a milestone fire making level a little bit of a random interlude to the uh winter todd grind but that is 70 farming it might seem really random kind of is but i realized this was a song of the elves requirement so i've been kind of slowly poking away at it admittedly i am just insanely it's not even forgetful i'm just really lazy i just hate farming a lot but i also realized that you know at some point i'm gonna need to head to tithe farm and it would be helpful to have 74 farming to do the logovano fruits there technically i could do it with a pie but higher level the better so if i can get to 74 before i start doing tithe farm that'd be great i missed it when it happened but uh that is level 70 fire making and 1800 total i'm pretty sure we've already gained like 50 total levels this video i'm actually gonna go open up these crates now hopefully i can get a couple pieces of pyromancer and then i'll see you guys again I don't know, 75? I'm curious what we can actually get from these crates.
it's at this level. All right, let's just start cracking these open real quick. Zoom. What? A Tome of Fire. And a fucking Tome of Fire. That's not exactly what you expect to get as your second collection log in here. It's a, a cheeky little mill, though. I'm, I'm not going to complain about it. That's just, that's weird. It's very weird. Okay, I'll take out 10 more crates. Let's we'll keep going. Whatever, it's fine. Hey, we did get a piece of Pyromancer. There's the Pyromancer garb. Boom. Love that for me. All right, this is the last of the crates. All right, that was actually really not bad at all. We got, I mean, it's more than not bad. That's amazing. We got a Tome of Fire. That's a slot I didn't think I'd fill in on this account. So I'll take that. All right, there we go. That is 75 fire making. Let's go rip open some more crates. All right, let me get like one new piece of Pyromancer, please. And I'll be a happy man. Five Snapdragon seeds. Jesus. That's just the last one. Damn, okay. I guess we didn't have as many crates this go around. All right, nothing. All right, we are up to 80 fire making now. Let's go ahead and crack these crates open. shitload of burnt pages though this is like we're actually making like a little bit of money here what are you kidding me what the fuck i can't express to you how ridiculous that is man again i'll take it it's another million gold I i'm definitely not upset about the money it's just that's just freaking weird dude it's just freaking weird so many burnt pages too like that's just wow okay all right and hey, there's two new items. Pyromancer hood as well as a Bruma torch. Pyromancer hood is very, very nice because, you know, a little bit more XP while we're here. Bruma torch, pretty freaking useless. I actually, I, I don't think this thing has any use. Maybe questing, but I'm kind of through the majority of the quest at this point. So it is what it is. At least we got one new piece and another another cool million gold. To people wondering, by the way, the only reason that the Tome of Fire is like remotely, I'm not even upsetting, but more so surprising, is just because I don't have it in the log on my other account, like my Iron Man account, despite having one, I got it pre-log. I just know I'm gonna go dry as hell on that account for it now. Another day, another milestone. That's 85 fire making now. Let's uh, go crack open quite a few more crates than we had last time, I think. Ooh, hey, there's warm gloves. Another broom and torch, but take the warm gloves. That's a new slot. Always glitches out if I don't do that. Another broom and torch. All right, fine. You know what? You don't have to finish the outfit. Just give me the pet. Hey, there's the Pyromancer robe legs. I will very much take that. Now we just need the boots. I think there's boots. Bro, three Snapdragon seeds, man. That's so good. Actually making money here. last four of this go around some more warm gloves all right so we have pretty much everything that i expect to get from here aside from the boots if i could get the uh if i get the boots from here i'd be pretty happy because you know that would almost refund the amount of slots i had to pay to open this place up but hopefully we get them by 90 because that's the uh, last set i'm gonna be doing so i'll see you guys then all right eight million uh, red flashing screens later there is 90 fire making so i'm gonna finish this game out and then open up the crates and we can go back to that master clue that i originally started this video with these kind of detours are kind of why i love this account though and why i like master clues because they just give you a lot to work on all right that's a, that's a lot of crates right there. So let's see if we can get that last piece of Pyromancer. That's all I want and I'll be happy. That's five Snapdragon seeds in one inventory. Look at this. 200k. Like, it doesn't seem like that much, right? But it's from Winter Todd, man. Making money from Winter Todd is insane to me. Come on, give it. There's a freaking magic seed and three Renar seeds too. Okay. Give me those boots, man. A lot of stuff in that inventory. Unfortunately, none of it is exactly what I'm looking for. So got a good amount of crates left to go though, so hopefully we can get it. You're joking. You're 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 physically you're joking. There's just no way. There's just no way. You know what? I'm happy about it. I'll take my million gold. Thank you very much. I would have still preferred it on my other account, but I'll happily take my million gold. Why not? Why the hell not? I'm pretty sure thanks to all those Tome of Fires, I've actually paid for my Herblore training just from this. But this is the last of the crates. Let me see the boots, please. 
Unfortunate. Well, we did still get uh, seven, I think it was seven slots back from doing Winter Todd, so it wasn't a complete waste. Obviously, at some point, I'll go back for nine. Well, I don't know. Maybe I won't go back for 99. I'm not an Iron Man. I don't really have to. I'll probably go back for the boots at some point. For now, though, really want to go back to working on this clue. All right, look, I'm going to say it. All you guys made fun of me a few episodes ago because I forgot that you could just trade over Black Dehyde on Entrana. Well, I needed 80 crafting for this anyway, so... All right, the big question. Was that worth it? Absolutely, it was worth it. We got a new collection log slot. These are some really bad value master clues, though. I don't know, maybe the average value has just gone down since the last time I've done them, but I will take the bowl wig. Look at that. Oof, that's fucking terrifying. Now, all it took was uh, a few days <laughs> to get that master clue done, but the bright side is now that we have that done, you know, we have the stats, don't have to worry about grinding them out again, so that's something. And, you know, getting a collection log slot for it actually kind of makes it all worth it. So let's go back and start cracking open those hard caskets, wherever that ended up in here. All right, let's see if we can actually get some collection log slots this time. There we go. Explorer's backpack. Absolutely beautiful. All right, give me a few more. Come on. That is a 13k hard clue. Wow. There we go. That, that's much better. The triple, the triple hard clue. Enchanted robe, rune helm H5, amulet of glory. I'm gonna be honest, getting the rune helm H5 and an amulet of glory on like an early stage Iron Man would be kind of like a wet dream, but uh, we'll take it. Okay, I, I, I do genuinely remember hard clues giving a lot more uniques than this though. There's a, the worst unique in the entire world from any clue scroll, the pith helmet. Disgusting, disgusting. I hate that thing. Well, there's something. Rune plate body trimmed. Maybe I just overestimated how good hard clues are. That's probably the the realistic answer, to be honest. There's a rune cane. I mean, we are getting some items, don't get me wrong. I just, I guess I expected to get like one from almost every single clue scroll. There's a good one, though. Zamorak coif and the ancient plate skirt. I'll happily take that. Bruh. There we go. That's... Mm. Mm. That's what you're looking for right there. Dehyde boots, armor kite shield, and another master clue. That's a one miller. You'll love to see that. And let's just, can I do the first step? Probably not, actually. Probably not. There's a lot of Sherlock steps I still have to train for. <laughs> Welcome gamers to challenge number three, I believe, of master clues so far. This one requires me to go north of Prif. And north of Prif means I need Song of the Elves. I think this is one of the clues I got in the last video, maybe the, the two videos ago. I don't know, man. I spend way too much time on these videos. Song of the Elves, actually, I think I have all the requirements now, except for Morning's End Part 2, so... <sighs> I did train my magic up. I guess I might as well go knock this quest out. It's worth doing and it'll open up a lot of content that I actually wanted to do later in this video anyway. All right, there's the easy quest done. Morning's end part one completed. Now it's time for the more difficult ones. I'm not gonna lie, 60,000 agility XP kind of almost makes that quest much more worth doing. Uh, but that is Morning's End Part 2 done. Now we just have Song of the Elves, which is, of course, the longest of the bunch. And I think this is my seventh time doing this quest, so let's get it done. Oh, the quest was actually uh, easier than I remember. I don't remember that being that chill. fight is so much easier than I remember it being, dude. Like, way easier than I remember it being. I guess blood blitz go hard. What have you done? I thought you were dead. Wait, aren't you supposed to be dead, bro? She did, like, 62 damage to you. That's like your whole health bar. Oh my god, this is my moment. How are you doing, you fucking traitorous bitch? I'll miss you. No, I'm just kidding. I hope you fall down one of those leaf traps, bro. Alright, we did it. Alright, that is Song of the Elves completed for, like I said, I'm pretty sure the seventh time or something ridiculous. Um, this is actually the city of content, man. There is so much stuff in here that I want to do, but I'll save that for after the clue scrolls for now. Boom. Big quest done. Any levels from that? Hey, 75 agility. Very nice. Actually, just one more level until we can do the Zora shortcut, so that's actually pretty great. Look at that. We got a second prif step in the same clue. Makes me feel extra good about getting that done. Ladies and gentlemen, was it worth it? Yo! Big worth it. I thought that was something way cooler for a minute, to be honest. I was like, for some reason, I thought that was Third Age, even though I, I know what Third Age looks like. These items always get me, but that's a Robe Top of Darkness and the Ancient Blessing for the Shared Log. I guess we don't have that one done yet either. 359k, pretty cool item. Double Log Slot from a Master. Now we do, of course, still have 20 hard clues left, so boom. Zamorak, page one. Man, I guess we 
had a lot of slots left in the shared log that we didn't have done yet. Man, seeing a 100k clue with full rune in a freaking Zami page, though, that hurts my soul. I'm convinced that I'm a little cursed on these hard clue uniques, but there's there's finally one there, the Cyclops hat, as well as another master clue. And it looks like off the rip, we can actually do this first step. With 13 uniques and 40 clues, that seems, that seems not good. All right, all right, not too bad. That's another master casket. Boom. Yo, and another master reward. Getting actually admittedly really lucky on uniques from master clues because they are not common and we've already had like four of them. They're not super valuable, the ones that we've been getting, but we're getting them and that's the important part. Now, if I could just get like nine more uniques from these clues, I'd be happy. What a start. Rune plate legs G, just a classic iconic item right into the nothing. I thought if I hyped it up, maybe the game would give me something there. Okay, you know what? It, it's good now because we got another pair of dehyde boots, and I'm pretty sure this is probably the most expensive one. A clue clocks in at 1.1 mil, and another pair of playlists. G. But I'll take, I'll take a 1.1 mil clue. That's pretty fantastic. And a rune full helm. See, this is more of what I was expect. A rune full helm, a rune helm H4. This is more of what I was expecting when I was talking about opening up these hard clues. You know, getting something like every time. You know, that's kind of what you expect for a, a new tier of clue scroll. Like that. Boom. Dark Cavalier. Is it worth anything? No. Do I care? Okay, yeah, kind of a little bit. But still, it's a, it's a slot. We take it. Another master. All right, Sherlock. Be nice. Be nice. Find a blood rune. A blood altar. Ah. Well, guess it's time for another detour, boys. This seems like a good a time as I need to go over here to the collection log, go over to mini games, go to Guardians of the Rift, and just open that up. Luckily, this one actually does have a lot of slots in it. 17. So it is technically a potentially profitable area of the collection log, which is nice. I guess I just stay here until 77 Runecraft. I've never actually trained runecraft with guardians of the rift i've only ever done it on my iron which was already 99 so i don't know how this mini game is in terms of training it's gonna be weird though because i'm not used to having no large pouches and stuff so this is gonna be it's gonna be different for sure all right i had to do temple of the eye i forgot that was a uh, quest to actually be able to gain access to the mini game and uh, that also got me 54 runecraft which conveniently lets me craft law runes i also forgot that that's something i have to think about is that i can't even make a lot of these runes yet death blood soul and wrath i guess wrath doesn't matter neither does soul but i can't do blood or death runes which kind of sucks i guess it's not that bad all right well that's my first game 421 elemental 377 catalytic i am going to be using binding necklaces while i'm doing this and making combination runes i'll explain all that in just a minute but this is definitely going to be like a little bit slower in terms of getting points i think i'll get like a hundred searches in the the rift rift dude out there whatever it's called before i go and do it since you know none of the rewards are actually going to help me too much besides the lantern i guess would be fantastic to get early but yes yeah, so i'll see you guys in a good handful of hours also 2400 xp per game plus you know whatever i get during the game means this might not take as long as i think it's still gonna take a while but probably not as long as i thought it would all right so round starts i'm down here i'm mining the uh, large guardian remains. I stay here until there's 30 seconds left on this timer up here. All right, once you get just shy of 30 seconds, you head up the, the little hill over here, over here, start crafting them, then just jump into whatever rifts are available, which sucks because those are kind of the profitable ones. But since this one is an elemental, I can show you guys just cast magic and view, use my big stack of air runes over here on the, uh, the altar. And instead of getting regular elemental runes, I get these poly elemental ones. These basically just give you a little bit more elemental points. I don't really know how much time it necessarily saves me but it's definitely worth doing then boom portals open up take the portal mine until you have a full inventory trying to keep a good balance of my catalytic and elemental energies but i know elemental is going to be able to pull way ahead and that's it i mean that's the game it's just rinse repeat i did just realize if i'm getting like 30 to 35k xp an hour this is gonna take me like 30 hours before i can do this clue step this video is gonna have a lot of hours in it again sorry that is 55 runecraft that is level 60 runecraft i think what i'm actually gonna do in terms terms of claiming rewards is I'm just going to claim them every five levels because the chance that I maybe spoon a lantern or something will make this whole process just way better. It makes more sense to do that rather than stock everything up all at once. All right, so I have 70-ish uh, collections here at the rewards garden. There's actually quite a few uh, rewards from Guardians of the Rift. Getting anything 
is uh, is nice. I should get at least like two or three collection log slots here just off the rip because some of these things are, are pretty common. You know, we're guaranteed to get at least one here and there it is right there. That is uh, Abyssal Pearls. This is the res Ooh, and a giant pouch. I didn't know you could get that from here. That's actually kind of nice. Um, Abyssal Pearls is the resource needed to spend at the shop over there. Didn't know you could get this though. That's actually really convenient. Now I guess I don't have to go grind one out. And an Abyssal... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Abyssal Red Dye. Hold on. Here's the theme of this episode. This is gonna, a bit of a tangent over to my iron real quick, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna go over to the Iron Man, okay? We're gonna click the collection lock. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's the one die I'm missing on my other account. Okay, it's fine. That's, that's, that's fine. I don't remember what this diary does. I'll figure that out later. That's just mean. That's actually just so ridiculous. Whatever, they're two separate accounts. I will take the collection log slot. It's used to recolor the outfit. Ah, oh, that one, that one stings a little bit. Hey, there's another one. Catalytic Talisman. Really not sure why this is a thing here, to be honest with you, but uh, I'll, I'll take it. It's a log slot. All right, well, there we go. Well, we did manage to get three slots. Definitely not the three I expected to get off the rip. I was expecting to get an intricate pouch. I'll take the Abyssal Red die. It is very rare. I know a lot of people are going to think that you can trade this in over here to Felix and you can you can swap the dies here, but it doesn't give you the other collection log slots. You have to actually pull the die out of the rift yourself. So like, for example, right here, if I say, yeah, how did you know? I'd like to swap it. Oh yeah, I'll take uh, the the green die. And then I'll get the abyssal green die here, but as you can see, it doesn't actually fill in a slot in the log. You have to get it yourself. I can and probably will turn this in to get, I think it's 50 abyssal pearls for it at some point though, because I don't care about recoloring the outfit on this account. Well, there is level 65 rune craft. You'll love to see it, you'll love to see it. So I can now go open up some more, uh, whatever, what are those called? More rewards, guardians. That doesn't sound right, but you guys know what I mean. All right, so just shy of 100 more pulls out of here at the Reward Guardian. Let's see if we can snag ourselves another log slot or just some more pearls, which will lead to another log slot. So either way, we should be walking away with something here. There we go. There's the intricate pouch. I think I got that at the same time as the catalytic talisman, which is interesting. So the intricate pouch is a slot on its own. I'll open all these at the end, but I think you can get, I think you get the, ne oh, there's another one right there too. I think you get the necklace that's in the log from this. I could be wrong. I can't remember how you get the necklace, but I know you can also get clue scrolls out of these. You know, I'll save them for the end. Hey, the Abyssal Needle. I thought that was a regular needle at first, I'm not gonna lie. The Abyssal Needle. Uh, this thing is fantastic in the future. Unfortunately, though, I actually can't do anything with it yet because you need 85 to make the Colossal Pouch. I think this is just gonna sit in my bank probably forever. I don't know if I'll ever get 85 Runecraft on this account, but it is a collection log slot. And truthfully, that is what we're here for aside from just getting 77 Runecraft. Cool, I will happily take that. Really wish I had gotten the uh, lantern, but I'm pretty sure that thing's actually really, really rare. And now I do have myself 350 pearls on the dot, which I think lets me buy the robe bottom. Yes, I have exactly enough to buy the robe bottoms of the eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that up, throw that on, and now we get a little bit of extra runes while we're while we're doing the mini game and another collection lock slot. I'm up to six slots now. By the time I'm 77, I'm guessing I should have probably at least two more pieces of the outfit. So we should end up pretty much breaking even here in terms of spending 10 and then getting 10 back. I also just realized hitting 65 runecraft means I can actually craft death runes now, which is convenient because it means the only pillar that I have to ignore in here is the blood one. So that's actually kind of nice. Hey, big level 70 runecrafting, all for those extra mind runes. That's what we do it for. You guys know I was just leaving the mind altars. That's clearly what I was doing all this for. That is also 1850 total. <laughs> halfway. We're halfway. Technically a little more because you do get boosted XP or like scaled XP at the end of your guard of the Rift game, so technically we're a little more than halfway there at this point. Good little marathon left to run here. We do, however, have 157 more pulls over here at the uh, Rewards Guardian, so it's gonna put us past 300. Let's just start pulling. Hopefully we get a new log slot. This is like one of the few things in the game where stacking up points for some reason just does not feel nearly as satisfying. I don't know why. Oh, never mind. It's so satisfying. It's so satisfying. Thank God we got this. The Abyssal Lantern. This thing is huge. 
huge. And we got it halfway, so, we, you know, we at least still get to get some use out of it. Just fantastic. I'll cover, actually, like, what I'm going to do with it in a little bit, though. Let's finish these rewards first. Wow. Okay. Abyssal green die. I, I'm actually kind of dumbfounded at that one. Uh, Abyssal green die. That is, uh, that's really freaking lucky to get. I'm sorry. I, I know it's like in the middle of this and I usually don't check until after we're actually like done with our little sessions here. But if I go to the Guardians of the Rift section now, that's pretty good. We are up to uh, eight out of 17 slots now. All right, that's all the stuff. We got 238 pearls out of that. I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't actually know that the rate on pearls is offhand, so. I think I'm gonna commit an act of heresy to a lot of people, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn in this abyssal die and get some pearls for it. I know a lot of people are probably not gonna be like super happy about that. Ultimately, this account is not here to do completionist stuff. That's what my other series is for. And by getting 50 more pearls, I can now buy the Boots of the Eye which is a log slot. And also it'll give me a little bit more runes in my next little bit of, uh, of crafting here. So I feel like it just makes sense. I don't regret it. Although you guys might get mad at me for it. As for the Abyssal Lantern, basically what this thing does is it gives you some bonus effects based on what type of log you put in it. My editor can put them all on screen right now if he really wants to. I'm pretty sure that the best one to use when you're maxed is U logs. The best one to use when you're not maxed is Redwood logs, I think. I could be wrong here. This is what the wiki says though. And honestly, I looked at the effects. They're very similar. Actually, I don't even know if I... Oh wait, I am 90 fire making. Oh, I can do this. I do need a tinderbox though. Yo, it's so convenient that we happen to get 90 fire making right before this because i can put the redwood log in here i need six redwood logs why the fuck do you need six how big is this lantern how the fuck you fit six stacks of logs in a lantern is beyond me but there we go redwood lantern amazing this uh is going to make my pouches no longer degrade as well as giving me some bonus points in guardians of the rift well i'm not going to wait for five level increments anymore because it, it's just it's really worth it they have a bunch of reward points again i think i have like 150 yeah i have 150 to go through here so let's just start opening these up see if we can maybe get ourselves another log slot i would love to just get some more pearls as well i don't really expect to get anything new here but you know, it's possible All right, well, we got up to 367 pearls from that, which actually I think is really good. How much is the hat? The hat is 400. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take that other green die since I turned in the other one earlier. Again, look away from the screen if you are a completionist. This is not something that you want to see. Uh, it's going to hurt your soul. I'm gonna go ahead and sell this for 50 pearls. Yep, take it. I don't really need it. We're gonna go over here to Apprentice Felix and buy ourselves the Hat of the Eye, which is another log slot. And I, I wanted the hat before the body so that I don't have to swap out of the Varrock armor because I'm just honestly really, really lazy. But that's actually really nice for me because that means that I now have 10 slots at Guardians of the Rift. Even though this is kind of just a huge detour to do that master clue, it was something I planned on doing this video anyway, and it's now paid for itself. Hopefully we can get the lost bag and the tarnished locket. We might even have enough to buy either the robe top or the ring of the elements as well. But I'll see you guys at 77. So a fun fact that I wish I realized sooner, when you're placing your little, uh, your cells down around the area, make sure you're always placing them at one that is taking damage, because if you do that, you actually get more runecraft XP. You get the points either way, but if you're after XP, always try and place it at one that's damaged. It actually is more than a sizable difference to XP. But there we go, that is level 75. I know I said that I'd see you guys at 77, but... I was thinking about it, and I realized there's really no point spending another, like, seven hours here getting two more levels when I can just boost for this. I'm never going to be going for 99 runecraft on this account, as its goal is not to max, so why not just get myself 75 and call it a day there? And I still have over 100 more collections here at the Rewards Guardian, so uh, that's going to put us damn near 600. So I'm going to go ahead and just rip these open real quick, see if we get anything, and uh, then we'll head out and finally finish that Master Clue. All right, well, unfortunately, that is all of my searches. Nothing, nothing crazy. I shouldn't really say unfortunately. We've had pretty decent luck here overall. Let me see, though. I do have just over 300 pearls again. Body's 350. Oh, the ring is 400. Ah, well... I might come back here at some point. I'm sure I'll come back here at some point if I really need collection log slots to unlock something else. But for now, 
I'm gonna give it a bit of a break. I've been here for a few days. So I do have all of these intricate pouches to open. Let me go knock out these clue scrolls first. All right, so I got a couple of these things, these intricate pouches I wanna open up. I think I can get a log slot from these. And apparently I can also get some lamps. Cool. That's useless. And eh, there's another hard clue. Actually, I'll take that. You know what? Free hard clues. All right, a couple more intricate pouches. Some soul runes, some more soul runes. Some blood runes, also fine. Another hard clue. A couple more. Dang. I was really hoping I could snag one of the other collection logs out of this, but hey, we still got 10, I think, from Gardens of the Rift, so it was break even. And now I can go get a little boost. I guess finish all these clues finally. Now you guys know there are a lot of ways to get boosts for skills, but certain skills are more limited than others, runecraft being one of them. The only real way to boost your runecraft level is by hunting hell rats. And you guys know, spicy stews, hell rats, no one likes doing that. There's actually one other method for runecraft that I just found out about though, and I kind of want to try it out just because it's weird and quirky. If I were to go and complete the quest, Death to the Dorgashin, which I actually don't think is that bad of a quest, there's an NPC in Dorgashin called Oldak. Now, Oldak actually makes you spheres for teleporting, and a lot of players are actually probably familiar with the NPC. What you might not be familiar with is the fact that he can actually boost your magic and or runecraft levels by two. I didn't know about this, and I thought it was really interesting, so I kind of want to go try it out and see if it's really consistent, because if it's a consistent plus two boost, I really have nothing to worry about in terms of getting those last two runecraft levels. All right, let's see if I can figure this out. So if I just go over here and I say, what have you discovered? Boom, there's a two runecraft boost right there. I just have to get over to where I need to be and then we're good. I mean, realistically, this isn't really all that useful for most people, but for me, it saves a little bit of time. Two runecraft levels is a lot and I'm probably not gonna get this step very often, so it's not a huge deal, but there's that task done. Also, it has a leap task in the Corona and Kebos area. All right, longest clue in the history of clue scrolls later. It was a mimic. Okay, all right, interesting. Hey, look at that. That's actually my first mimic kill. Okay, so that's free four combat points as well. And the music track, actually, if I ever go for the music cape on this account, which I probably won't. That's, that's kind of cool. What do we get from it? Eh, 357k. You know what? It's about average for a master clue. Kind of, a, whenever you get a mimic, you always hope for something crazy, but it never happens. All right, couple of clues left. Random beginner, random medium. Actually, that random medium was my 400th medium, so we actually have the clueless clue scroll. That's kind of cool, although it's not a collection lock slot, unfortunately, and for some weird reason, I don't know why it's not in there. But back to the hard clues. A beautiful double runeful helm trimmed and a black cavalier into the red dragon mask love to see it love to see it into the nothing but rune is always nice i guess okay sardom and kite shield see again this is kind of more what i was expecting when it comes to opening hard clues also that's the 50th hard clue in the account very nice ancient plate body oh my god okay purple sweets are 13k each right now for some freaking reason Another master. Hello, friends. We're back again with another another skilling session. This time it's fletching, so not too, too bad. I have to get up to 80-something for rune darts. 81 for rune darts, though I'm, I'm just gonna get to 77 and use the pie to boost it. I, just, I don't want to skill anymore this video, man. Um, my hand. My hand hurts so bad, but there we go. That is uh, 77 fletching, which means I can buy a dragon fruit high and i think this gives you four fletching levels i'm and then i can also buy like a singular rune dart tip because why not i'll just buy one i don't need to make a lot of 10 i'm pretty sure i just need one and take out the master clue do this do this do this boom there we go all right next master clue a hey, another master clue unique piscarillius hood and 462k it's actually pretty good five hard clues left to go let's just finish these up and move on oh, never mind that's another master clue and a gothic scrolls here it's fine i shouldn't really be upset at master clues but uh <laughs> you guys have seen some of the grinds i've been doing in this video for them so wouldn't mind taking a break oh funny story i think i just got the only sherlock step that i still cannot do in order to do this i need 83 farming now this is actually boostable because you know, I could plant one in my POH and I think that would count, but I still need the 83 farming in order to plant it. If I have a spirit seed in my bank, I will do this and I probably do. Man, I really wish I hadn't said that. All right, I have three spirit seeds in my bank. And you might be thinking, all right, so this is just gonna take you time to level. Yeah, technically uh, that is true. I would probably aim for 79 and just boost up with the pie like I've been doing with a lot of other stuff. But hey, why not kill two birds with one stone? I 
I realize I've somehow inadvertently made this entire episode about mini games. Let's go ahead and unlock Tithe Farm. <laughs> Why not? Tithe Farm does offer a bunch of unique rewards. It also offers the Herb Sack, which I planned on unlocking Tithe Farm anyway to get the Herb Sack when I go back to Training Slayer. It's just a convenient item to have. Everything else in here, I'm pretty sure is only obtainable from Tithe Farm, but I will go double check before I make any mistakes. All right, well, I double checked and none of this stuff is in any of the other areas of the log. I don't really know how long I'm going to stay here. I don't know if I'm doing this one for the log slots or if I'm doing this one just for the XP, but hey... We need the XP anyway. We did get 74 specifically for this. Probably even earlier this video at this point. I'm not sure this video has been running for like three weeks real time at this point. But uh, I guess I'll go get started on some Tithe Farm. I actually don't know how many levels I'm going to get from doing this. Maybe I should keep doing tree runs at the same time. I'll at least go do my mahogany tree runs. I kind of want to try something. I don't know if this is actually going to work. But I do have a good amount of Slayer reward points. And... I don't really consider these terribly difficult to get because they're somewhat passive. So I'm curious what happens if I do this. Okay, so you do get the collection log slot when you buy it from here. So I'm glad I waited to do that. In fact, I don't even think I could do it before this episode because I think you actually need to have 58 herb lore for it. But that is the herb sack. I chose to do it through this instead of through Tithe Farm because it's actually tied with the seed box for the most expensive reward here. I'd rather use the points on the cheaper stuff just to knock out the log slots. It's actually been a really long time since I've been back to Tithe Farm, but it looks like they've made some pretty cool changes. Uh, you can have like basically infinite seeds with you now. It's instanced, so I should never see anyone else in here. So uh, it actually might not be that bad. It might not be that bad. I'll see you guys in like 20 minutes when I immediately regret those words. So I have done Tithe Farm a long time ago, and this is the method that I did back then. I'm probably going to continue to do this one. I only plant 20 fruit at a time. I know technically you can plant 25 if you're like mega tick perfect. I really don't like playing like that though. Let's get a little B-roll action going here. Show you guys what one full run of 20 fruit looks like. Right, that's one full 20 fruit run. They don't really get points. I think it's every 100 you get points. I don't know how it works now with being able to have 10,000 seeds though, but 77 farming. Okay, that's kind of cool. It's actually going to be faster than I thought. I'm already almost there. I just need two more levels. I didn't think that it would be uh, this fast here. I guess I've never used Tithe Farm to like level... <laughs> before. <laughs> it's like almost every minigame. I've never like leveled with any of these minigames. It's always just been, I just do them to get the log slots. So, all right, not too bad. Uh, I started doing the method with 24 fruits instead of 20 just to try it out. And it's actually not that bad. Uh, it is a little anxiety inducing uh, because at the end of the run, it gets a little tight. It gets a little tight. I know you can do 25, but I'm pretty sure that requires you to be pretty much tick perfect. So I'm doing 24 instead since I'm going to be here for a long time anyway. See, if you have anxiety, <laughs> watching those timers, it's a little, a little, a little spooky at the end. Um, yeah, you can only look away for like, you can only miss like a handful of ticks. I could definitely get the 25 going, but it's just not worth it. Yeah, actually not bad at all. If you look up here, you can see my XP per hour. Um, meaning I've been doing this for just about an hour to get 312 fruit. That's actually pretty good. You know, I'll, I'll happily take that. 106k XP per hour is it's nothing to sneeze at, man. And also I did just check, you can log out and in and you do keep the fruit in your inventory now. You don't have to actually like, pretty sure as long as you don't leave, you keep the fruit. So that's kind of nice. All right, well, I have a bunch of points here. So I'm going to go ahead and just buy the full farmer's outfit here. I don't know how many points I've left because I can't see. All right, 71 points left. Instead of going and finishing off the last level here, I think I'm just going to go do a tree run and a fruit tree run that should get me to level 79. Since finishing off the level here isn't going to get me enough points to buy the two remaining items, which are the Grocola's can and seed box. I can always come back later to get those. And if I ever get the other requirement for masters, which I believe is 85 farming for the final tier of the farming guild, I'll have to probably come back here anyway, because I don't really plan on doing tree runs after this. But look at that. Oh yeah, that's someone's fantasy right there. I just know it. I'm pretty sure one of these items is needed for a master clue step too, so. Turns out I'm kind of dumb. I forgot that the farming pie for whatever reason, only boosts you by plus three. So I actually have to go get spicy stews. I'm still getting spicy stews because I don't want to do any more tithe farm right now. All right, <laughs> what is in this master casket? Wow, now that, 
Now that was worth it. And Kumask, it comes back. I have this item on my iron. I mean, again, it's not in the log because it was pre-logged. But this is one of my cool items that I had back in the day. Although I have to admit, on on this particular character model, it's actually quite frightening. Um, but the Anku mask is, as you can see, extremely expensive because it is really rare compared to pretty much all the other rewards from Master Clue Scrolls. Could be wrong, I'll, yeah, Mr. Editor, throw it on the screen, do your thing. I'm pretty sure it's five times as rare. It's this and the mummy outfit pieces are pretty freaking rare. So uh, I will happily take that. And that's a nice little bump to the bank as well. All right, let's get these last, <sighs> for mine. Let's go to this Master Clue. Ha <laughs> ha! At least my 90 fire making grind earlier this video becomes worth it now because I actually got the 90 fire making step. So, hey, some of you guys are probably saying that that was uh, not worth the time, but I would have had to do it anyway. All right, that one wasn't too bad, at least. That was pretty quick. Yeah, that reward is pretty bad, though. Two more hard clues. Apparently, we already have the enchanted row bottom and finishing off with a 24,000 GP hard clue. All right. That was a little underwhelming. But overall, I feel like we did pretty well. Um, I actually am kind of curious. So Masters, we actually have six uniques now, which is not bad at all for only 12 Masters completed. And for Hard Clues, we got 23. So it's a little less than I was hoping for, but overall, not too bad, especially considering we got three different pairs of Dehyde boots. So let's go sell everything off and see what the bank is looking like. And you know what? Just for fun, just for fun, I have nine of these. All right, it's, it's not fun anymore. I'm just going to open the rest of them. I don't care. There's no way, right? Now oh, we got an XP lamp out of it. I'll take that. Well, the loot tab price isn't entirely honest because, you know, it had like the armor helm, the bryophyte staff, a couple of things I had to actually buy for the clues. But according to this, our bank value is closing in on 300 mil now, which is kind of insane. I'm trying to figure out where the heck that price is coming from. Oh, that's right. I still have the Venator bow. I forgot I even had this thing. What is this worth now? Well, 50, 50, 54 million gold. Is that what I bought it for? Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, that's pretty great. We're we're actually making pretty good, uh, pretty good grounds in terms of our bank value. And I don't want that to stop. I actually want the bank value to go up pretty dramatically because I have some big plans for the future. That being said, I do think this is actually a pretty good place to cap things off. We did get a lot of collection log slots in this video, as well as just a crazy amount of account progression. So we're up to nearly 400 slots well i guess 368 slots now and the main goal of the next video money making i'll see you guys there